Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Well, we've got a neat little effect for you today. We've got three images here. I want to hover over one of them. It's going to flip to reveal a call to action. And that's a great little effect to have on your site. People are mounting around your site and that happens. It's going to get their attention pretty quickly. And as you may have noticed, when you take your mouse off, it's going to flip back to being an image again. This is really easy to do. There's no actual coding involved in this today. We're just going to use the inbuilt features of the Divi theme itself to create this effect. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the visual builder so we can build on the front end. Okay, and once enabled, let's go down to where we want to work. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to add a new section. I'm going to make it a regular section. Inside that section, let's perhaps put two columns this time. I had three before, but this will work with one, two, three, or however many you want. Inside, I'm going to pop a call to action module. Great. Let's roll this up so that the slider doesn't distract us too much. Now you can put any module you like in here. I just happen to be using this because I wanted something with a little button. Simple call to action module. Put your title in here, obviously. Put what your button wants to say there. You may have noticed there is no button. Button's not going to show up till we give it a link, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Down below, obviously, you've got your content. This is a regular co content field. You can align, bold, italicize, make bullet lists, add media if you want to, and create titles. Again, I'm going to leave mine just like that for expediency. Now, down below, we've got the link. Once I put a button link in there, you'll see that button appear. I'm going to put a hashtag in there as a placeholder. There's the button. Fantastic. Always best practice. If you're linking to your own site, open it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab. That way your site will stay open. Now, if you want to add another link for the whole module, it doesn't have to be the same one. It can be any link you want. Wherever they click anywhere on the module, we'll, this link will take them. And again, best same practices apply. Great, well, I'm going to change that background color a bit. Not too keen on that sort of aqua or whatever it is color. I'm going to make my simple blip. And this is where you'll always find backgrounds, links, and text in every Divi module in the content right here. Great. So I'm going to save that now. I will sort of create that flip effect. To do that, we're going to actually work on the column itself rather than the module. So to get to the column that the module is sitting in, I need to go into the row, the green tab. And here's my two columns, left and right. We're working on the left column. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go over to design. And this is common again to all Divi modules and rows. I'm going to go down to transform. Now we've got several little options here. We can transform scale which to make it bigger and smaller. We can transform translate, which will move it around. We can transform rotate. We're going to use that today. We can skew or we can transform origin, which is the point at which something rotates from. So let's go over to rotate. Let's go down to our middle one. We're going to rotate it around this axis, but we only want to rotate it when they put their mouse on it or hover. And again, common to all Divi modules, if you hover up over the dark writing within a module, you'll see some little icons. If there's an arrow there, we've got one. You can click on it. It'll let you put one value in for desktop when the mouse is not on it, and a different value in for hover, obviously when the mouse is on it. So for the hover state, I'm going to drag this around. And I have to do it this way around. I can't just go back one. It won't do the same thing. 357 is close enough, and I'm just going to increment up with the little arrows there to 359. If I go further, that is just going to take it back to zero. There'll be no animation. And if you do minus one, it'll just go back by minus one, even though it's in the same place. So you have to sort of drag it around this way, but that's fine. No problem at all. 354. There we go. Great. 
Now, the time it takes to go from desktop to hover state is 300 milliseconds with Divi, which is great, but I want to slow mine right down so it's a lot more graceful so they can look at the image and see the text sort of fade in there. So to do that, I'm going to go over to the advanced. And again, this is common to all DB modules. You'll find the timing in the advanced. Now if we go down to transitions, there's our transition duration or timing. I'm going to slow mine down to about a second, 1000 milliseconds. Don't want any delay. I want it to happen as soon as they put their mouse on it. And the transition speed curve that I'm going to use for this is ease in, ease out. That way, when they take their mouse off, it's going to ease back around again. Great. Well, we're good with that. While we're here, let's put an image in the background of this column. And this is the image that's going to appear when we first load the page. So let's go back to content and we'll go down to background. And you've got color, gradient, background image, video, patterns or masks. I'm going to pop in a little image right there. Hit the little plus to add an image. Add whatever image you want to pop in there. Great. And we're pretty much finished with this column. So let's save this and we'll make our actual call to action appear and disappear. Once we save, it's going to take us back to the row settings. We'll save the row settings. Now let's go into the module, make it disappear until we hover over it. Dial tab for the module. I'm going to go in, I'm going to go to my design. This time I'm going to go down to the filters. And you may notice there's a transform down here. That's the great thing about Divi. We always find the same things under the same tabs. So let's go to the filters. And we've got some awesome filters. Hue, saturation, brightness, contrast, invert, sepia, opacity, which we're going to use today. Blur and a blend mode for blending images and colors. So let's go to opacity and we'll do the same as we did with the column. Hover over it. Hit the little arrow. Desktop. I don't want to see it at all, so I'm going to bring the opacity all the way down. When they hover over it, I want it to come back again. So I'm going to bring the opacity all the way back up again. So we've got invisible, where we can just see the image, and visible when it comes back. Now I want to match the timing of this with the timing of our column rotating, which was a second or a thousand milliseconds again. Common to all modules, we can go over to the advanced and there we're going to find the transitions again. So I'm just going to type in 1000 there to match what we had over in the column. No delay. Transition speed curve, ease in, ease out. That's great. If we've done everything correctly, we can save that. We'll go to the bottom of the page and save the changes. Hit the little green save button or save draft or publish. Let's exit the visual builder. And roll on down to where we want to work. Roll on down where we were working. There's our little image. When I hover over it, it's going to flip to reveal that call to action. They can read it and click the button. It's not actually quite straight there. It's 359 degrees, but who's going to know? And as you can see, when I take my mouse off, it's going to flip back out again. And if people are mousing around your site and that happens, that's going to get their attention pretty quickly. So there you go, guys. Very simple little effect there, but very effective and very easy to do. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Have a look at our Divi Hover Effects playlist down below. If you'd like to learn more about Hover Effects, there's all kind of amazing things you can do. Don't forget, if you have any questions, pop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them or make a demo video for you. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.